Southern Conference, upsetting the six-time league champions 14 to seven. The Eagles recovered as they ripped off 10 straight wins to capture the Southern Conference title and reach the 1AA semifinals. But a new Southern Conference season is here, and Wofford looks to take another bite out of the champs. The Georgia Southern Eagles against the upset-minded Wofford Terriers. It's coming up next on Fox Sports Net. campus at Wofford College. We welcome you to Spartanburg, South Carolina at Fox Sports Net coverage of the Southern Conference tonight. It's the Eagles of Georgia Southern University against the Terriers of Wofford College. A very pleasant good evening, everybody. Bob Rathman, Dave Archer, great to have you with us. For years, the Southern Conference has been dominated by the big three, Georgia Southern and Furman and Appalachian State. And Dave, the thinking here in Spartanburg is they want the big three to become the big four. Yeah, Georgia Southern comes in with their normal swagger. They've established their tradition, but Wofford's trying to establish theirs. And they did a little bit of that last year in Statesboro with a 14-7 win. They get another shot at the big kid on the block. Well, Georgia Southern had its difficulties last week. They went to McNeese State, now the new number one team in 1AA, and they were thumped pretty soundly, so they come to Spartanburg with a bit of revenge on their mind for that game in Statesboro a year ago. They've gotten the yardage so far this season, but not the productivity on the scoreboard. They need to adjust that flex bone. They really do, and they have not taken care of the football. Chaz Williams is the key to their attack. He's the quarterback. 2002 Southern Conference Player of the Year. He has to handle the, the option attack, but the key maybe for him is to get Jermaine Austin, the fullback involved. And both coaches this team of these two games feel like that that may be the key if Jermaine Austin is the man. And Wofford will have one notable injury. J.R. McNair, their talented fullback, a no-go from the starting lineup tonight. Yeah, and they don't lose just their his productivity on the field. They lose his huge leadership responsibilities. He really has something to say on both sides of the ball for this team. The head coach of the Eagles is 45-year-old Mike Seawalk from Johnstown, Pennsylvania, now in his second season at the helm of this Eagle program. They enter the game one win and one loss. 55-year-old Mike Ayers is the head coach at Wofford. He's the school's winningest coach all time with 91 wins, his 16th season as the head coach of the Terriers. Back deep for Wofford. This is Matt Bevan, a freshman out of Lexington, Kentucky. He's back there along with Sheila Wood. And Marshall transfer Jonathan Dudley is set to kick things off for Georgia Southern. The Southern Conference opener for these two teams. There has been one league pl game played. Furman winning over Elon back in August. Now the league starts in earnest this weekend. A touchback in the end zone. And Wofford will bring it out to the 20-yard line. At the controls of the Wofford Wingbone is a junior quarterback. His name is Jeff Zolman. He was certainly a key player in last year's Terrier upset in Statesboro, Georgia. There's Jeff coming onto the field. He's passed for 60% accuracy so far, 9 of 15 with two intercepted. The rest of Zolman's numbers so far this season, two picks and no touchdown passes. Up front, the Terriers have two all-conference performers that we'll tell you about as the Terriers now begin first down and 10. And immediate toss to Ben Mungin, and he's taken out of bounds. Up front, two all-conference performers, Chad Bentley at left tackle and Eric Deutsch at right guard. The rest of our Carolina Ford dealer starting lineup, freshman Kevius Johnson replaces J.R. McNair at fullback. Kevius is averaging over six yards per carry. Second down at nine after gain of one on Wofford's initial offensive thrust of the game. And now the handoff goes to Gabriel Johnson. And he is stacked up, trying to get over the left side. For Georgia Southern defensively, they have all juniors up front defensively. Eric Hadley was voted preseason All-Southern Conference. They have a very solid linebacking core. The man in the middle is Derek Butler, Jr. from Orangeburg, South Carolina, the leader of that linebacking core. And seniors on the corners. Stokes is a good one. Also at safety, Young and Muhammad have one interception apiece. Third and long for the Terriers at their own 22-yard line. 
Wing in motion. Zolman on the option. He's going to keep it and gets flattened at the 26 to lose football. And Wofford has recovered. So Georgia Southern's defense, Dave Archer, with a pretty good stand on three and out. James Richard makes a good play here on the option. They stay on the ground on third down, trying the option the outside. Good job of stringing it out. And then Burchett makes a big hit to stop the play short of the first down. James Young, the, the, the talented safety for Georgia Southern, made the first two tackles for the defense. The punter for Wofford is Jimmy Miner. He's a great punter, but I'm wondering if they're going to kick it to Lewis Barr. Barr is a tremendous return man. He's going to catch this one at his own 32, and let's see if he can turn on the Jets. 40, spun around and taken down at the 42-yard line. So great field position for Georgia Southern. Our Carolina Ford dealers starting lineups for the visitors from Statesboro, Georgia. At quarterback, the record breaker, Chaz Williams. He rushed for over 1,400 yards, a Southern Conference record, but had only eight rushing yards against Wofford last season. The offensive line sets the tone for the flex bone that is averaging 320 yards per game rushing. And number six, Jermaine Austin is Williams' tag team partner in that option attack. First and ten, and here comes Chaz, trying to turn the corner, stumbles his way to the 40-yard line. A loss of two on the play. Let's check out the defense for Wofford. Injuries at the nose tackle position. They have forced Lee Basinger out from the right tackle spot to the nose. The inside linebacker, Jim Thurman, was a two-time selection last year as the Southern Conference Freshman of the Week. And at free safety, the Terriers' top tackler, senior Matt Nelson. A loss of two. It is second down and 12. At Georgia Southern's 40. And Jermaine gets the carry over the 47. Austin's first carry of the game takes the ball out to the 47. It's going to be third down and about five yards to go. He's the featured part of the attack we talked about, Bob. He's the guy that really gets things going, whether they're able to run the fullback. If they can run him successfully, then all of a sudden Chaz Williams and his ability to run the option on the edge becomes a huge factor. First play of the game, a little quarterback sweep to the left side. Ryan Steele came up and made a nice play to stop him for, for a two-yard game or a two-yard loss. Last week, Georgia Southern picked up 376 yards against McNeese, but they ended up losing the game by 21 points. Turnover's a big problem. On the option, T.J. Anderson. And he is shy of that first down, it appears, from here. It's going to be fourth down and about a yard. Matt Nelson, we talked about him, number five, coming up to make that tackle. On cue, he hit him right in the jaw with that uh, tackle. We talked to him yesterday. We could see it in his eyes just in the, our pregame talks that he was ready to play yesterday afternoon. So he's excited that the kick has finally come. It's going to be fourth down and one. And they're going to go for it. These two teams think short and, uh, fourth and short are something they can pick up readily. This is a big, big situation, obviously, early in the game. Williams stopped. No first down. And Dave Archer, some momentum, swings to Wofford's side. Super stop. They flooded the two gaps on both sides of the, of the center. Tried to push Chaz Williams' ability to get outside on the option and made the play in the backfield. You see the gap blitz right there by, by Jimmy Thrift. And then Whitney makes the play at the end of the play. But just, just super penetration by the Wofford defense. The Terrier. Another option attack. And they take a back seat to no one. They're averaging 342 yards per game on the ground. They call their option the wing bone. At Georgia Southern, it's the flex bone. But they get a lot of the, of the same looks because the fullback is featured. Yeah, a lot of similarities between the two. This time they come out in an I formation set and just run a basic I formation ISO play to the strong side. It gets them about four yards. Second down and six. Zolman at quarterback will throw off the option and it is complete over the 40 and out of bounds at the 36 yard line. Derek Butler made the tackle but too late. Shield Wood, the wide receiver, was able to pull it in. 
Sprint out to the near side. Zolman gets good blocking out in front. Nobody around his feet, and he can get over on that front foot and make a good throw, and then Wood goes up and makes the catch in traffic, comes down and gets a little extra. How about that catch in traffic? And now watch him buy a little extra yardage. Super job out there by Wood. An 11-yard reception gives Walford a first and 10 at the Georgia Southern 36. Coming around is Gabriel Jackson. And a gain to the 33-yard line. Free safety man James Young was the first man to get to him. Another wrinkle you can use in this, in this flex bone or wing bone type formation is misdirection. When you have a team that's as athletic as Georgia Southern, try to get those athletes flowing one way and then bring a running back the other, and they get a nice crease in there for a two, three-yard game. It will be second and seven. Opening quarter from Gibbs Stadium on the Wofford campus here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Mungin, the motion man, the handoff goes to Kevius Johnson. And the freshman takes it down to about the 28. They need to get to the 26 for a first down. This is a young man they're very excited about here at Wofford. Uh, Kevius Johnson getting a chance to fill in for the for the highly touted J.R. McNair. And uh, he, he had two touchdowns two weeks ago against South Carolina State. Third down and three from the 29. Zolman throws incomplete at the 19-yard line. Again, they fake off the misdirection. Zolman gets to the outside and then throws back. And you kind of you don't want your quarterback throwing the ball back to the inside. Not as severe as it initially looked. As I look back back at it, it was more into the inside. And you can get in trouble there. You get people flowing to the outside. Throw, but he got the incompletion, and now they're still in a. And they talked about yesterday how they're not confident in their kicking situation. Bob going to go for it here at the 30-yard line. So far this year, Walford five of nine in converting fourth downs. They've got fourth and three here. And Zolman's going to burn a timeout. That stops things with nine minutes to go in the opening quarter with our score of Walford nothing and Georgia Southern nothing for Southern Conference football on Fox Sports Net right after this. Tonight's game is brought to you by your Carolina Ford dealers driving the Carolinas by bb and You can tell that we want your business and by Stedman Hawkins, keeping active people active. Bob Rathbun, Dave Archer with you on Fox Sports Net. A big fourth down for Wofford here. Fourth and three, the sixth play of this drive as they operate from the Georgia Southern 29 yard line. Joel Zolman checking off. Yes, he is with a lone setback. Option comes, and Zolman takes off. He's got a lot of green grass in front of him. And somersaults his way to the three. Very reminiscent, Dave, of the play that helped Walford win the game last year in Statesboro. Zolman took off, broke it through the seam, and went on 54 yards to get Walford close. Similar play here. Yeah, a little counter option from Zolman. And you see the crease open up. Good block there on Burchett. And then Zolman just gets as much as he can get before he's run out of bounds. A 26-yard gain for the Walford quarterback. And the Terriers in great shape. This handoff going inside, trying to get it down to the two-yard line. As I've been impressed with the fact, as Corey Dunn gets off that pile, I've been impre impressed with so many different looks by Wofford to start this game. They really have. They've shown a lot of different formations. They've given them, they've come at them from different angles. They've shown the traditional option, a little reverse option. They had a couple of counter plays, misdirection plays, and they've even thrown the ball a couple of times. So a lot of different packages from the Wofford offense. Kevius Johnson is the lone setback. Again, Zolman. Checking the sidelines. Changes the play. And Burns yet another timeout as the play clock was down to one. The second timeout called by the Terriers on this drive. A timeout at Spartanburg. We'll be right back. The NFL returns to Fox on Sunday when the Buccaneers visit Atlanta for an NFC South showdown. Or oh, the Giants take on the Red Hot Redskins as two NFC East rivals collide. Coverage begins Sunday at noon Eastern 
the biggest stories are in the NFC, and the NFC is on Fox. The Wofford Terriers knocking on the Georgia Southern door. They've taken it 49 yards in seven plays, and they have it second and goal at the two. Wofford holding on a big fourth down, Dave. It seemed to give them a little bit of momentum. Zolman had the big break. Uh, the quarterback keeper, and now they're in pretty good shape. And what it does when you get a turnover, and that's essentially what it is when you hold there, is a turnover, you get half the field to work. You don't have to go the long way. Johnson is into the end zone for the touchdown. Freshman Kevius Johnson with his third touchdown this season. Quarterback Jeff Zolman leads Walker to the game's first score. That's just, this is just a matter of coming off the ball and hitting the other guy in the mouth and giving it to your best back and let him try to get the touchdown. This big offensive line for off, Wofford comes off the ball and blows Georgia Southern's athletes into the end zone. You see the, the game was played on the Georgia Southern side of the football, and that's what got their, their, their running back in the end zone. Nick Johnson, who had never played a football game in his life until two weeks ago, kicks the extra point. Tacking on one after Kavius Johnson scores to open it for Wofford in a very positive fashion. They lead Georgia Southern 7-0. 25th ranked Wofford in 1-AA leads number 6 Georgia Southern 7-0 here in the first quarter. For extended regional highlights and in-depth interviews, catch the Southern Sports Report tonight. Pam Oliver lets us in on some NFL surprises, a make-or-break day in the SEC. And we'll have in-depth coverage of the Georgia Tech and Clemson game tonight on the Flats. It's all coming up immediately after the game on Fox Sports Nets. That's a good show. I watch that show all the time down there in Atlanta. Good show. And a good showing by this freshman, Kevius yeah. Johnson. Yeah, Kevius Johnson pounded in, but it was Zolman that set it up. The fourth down, 26-yard run down inside the five, and then Kevius Johnson gets credit for the touchdown but credit Zolman and he checked off a couple times in that series to get his team in the right play in fact he checked off on the fourth down play which tells me he's watched a lot of film and is very familiar with what Georgia Southern's trying to do defensively the deep man is Lewis Barr for Georgia Southern and over under coming to Barr at the five Nice fake. 25-30. Guy can run 40 and knock that about. A tremendous return up to the 49-yard line. A 44-yard return for Lewis Barr. Well, this is the guy they were extremely sensitive about getting the football to. We, we mentioned this guy's name yesterday and talking to him. They kind of cringed. And look at the move he makes. And it's just a matter of good blocking downfield and then Barr using his speed. And Matt Nelson, the outstanding free safety, makes a tackle on special teams. So the Eagles down seven get excellent field position. First and ten from the 49. And Jermaine Austin right up the middle to the 45-yard line. If Southern is to have some success tonight and they want to run the football, let's make no mistake about it, they don't throw the ball very well. If they want to run the football, Jermaine Austin is going to have to be the guy that carries that load, and then a supplement to that will be Chaz Williams on the edge because I think this defense is really geared into stopping Chaz Williams. Chaz on the option. And the give to Kevin Davis to the 31-yard line. There's what happens. You immediately get a little effect from the fullback, and then all of a sudden the option to the outside. Kevin Davis had a huge day last, last week against McNeese State, had 133 yards on the ground, so we know that he can make some plays, and he does there. Here's a look at this first down run for Davis. Well, what happens there is Nelson, who comes up right there and misses there, ends up making the tackle. He waits just a second, and he gets caught. Up the middle, Austin. To the 26. In this option style of offense, when you, when you start trying to defend it, there are certain guys that are in charge of certain parts of the option. It may be the safeties involved for the pitch, uh, the outside linebacker has the quarterback, and somebody inside has to take the fullback. If somebody misses their assignment or they get them blocked, it's problems. Three carries, 18 yards for Austin. On the toss, Anderson. Taken down by Timmy Thrift, the inside linebacker. Timmy a junior 
out of Florida, stayed right at home to make the play. This is the second play Thrift has made. But we, don't, we can't forget the play made on fourth down to stop him on the conversion situation. Here he comes up and makes a big hit right on the line of scrimmage. Third down and six. Williams gives, and Austin crawls his way. But shy of a first down to about the 23. They need to get to the 21 for the first down. It will be fourth down for the Eagles. Well, the Terriers again being asked to perhaps stop a fourth down, or will Georgia Southern try to kick one here? Sean Holland is coming into the game, and he's going to attempt a 40-yard field goal to get the Eagles on the board. So far this year, one for one, hit a 36-yarder last week at McNeese. End over end, and it is no good. Holland missing on a 40-yarder, and Wofford for the second time, Dave holds him. Well, I mean, credit, they, yeah. There's a fourth down, not missed field goal. Credit the defense, too, Bob, on the way they're not allowing the big play. You're not seeing big chunks of yardage by this Georgia Southern offense. It's four, three, two, six. They're making them earn every inch of yards that they're getting, and that's that's the key, a limit, limit their ability to make the big play. Let's take another quick peek at the field goal attempt. Well, the way the ball was spinning when it came out, it looked like a fat, fat sand iron. It looked like it was a little right. Yeah, you should be plugged. <laughs> <laughs> Wofford no. has it first and ten. Young. Well, I've hit enough fat sandwiches in my day. <laughs> this is Gabriel Jackson who made the carry. Gabriel, a sophomore out of Delagona, Georgia. Sophomore. Interesting stat for all the yardage they get. Jackson's their leading rusher for the year. He's got 60 yards. Yeah, he's... But he, did, he makes a nice pick up here, and again, we're seeing good positive plays on first down for Wofford, staying in second and short situations. Second and three on this snap is quarterback Jeff Zolman. Checks, barks out the signals, and it's an inside handoff. Jeff Sullivan over the 35 to the 36, and that's a first down. Wofford continues to mix things up on offense. We saw the eye toss on the first play of this series and then the simple dive to the fullback to pick up the first down. They're also changing formation. That time, two backs, two receivers, and a flex tight end, which means he's away from the line of scrimmage, showing different looks to the Southern defense. Mike Ayers, the head coach, was telling us yesterday, Dave, how they had scripted the first 30 plays, and they are running that script to a T. Wofford keeping it on the ground and up to the 40-yard line, Eric McIntyre, number 70, in the bottom of that pile getting up for Georgia Southern. But Mike had it all planned out, and they are executing the plan. They really are, and they're staying with their script, and they're successful with it. The first thing that will get you out of your script is when you start going three and out. They're not doing that. It's also setting up stuff for what they want to do in the second half. They're watching from upstairs. If they see Georgia Southern's not adjusting some of these sets, they'll get to something later on. Zolman on the draw. Kevius Johnson over the 50 and into Georgia Southern Territory at the 48. Another first down for Wofford their 11th of the game. And another different play. This is a draw play. They had not thrown a drop back pass yet in the game, but it's just a simple draw. Shows play action, then a draw play to Kevius Johnson, and we see why they're so excited about this guy. Then he lowers his head and puts one on James Young at the end of the run. 11-yard run, I should say. Fourth first down for Wofford. And the Terriers playing with a great deal of confidence. Zolman keeps and is taken down at the 50. It's going to be a loss of two. James Burchett was the first man to get there. Big James out of Richmond Hill, Georgia. Had a huge game against Wofford last year with 17 tackles. Yeah, something about Wofford brings out the best in James. He had, like you said, 17 hits last year. And he's had a couple of big hits already in this game on the quarterback. Last year, Wofford won at Georgia Southern. And they also won a big league game at Appalachian, but did not make the 1AA playoffs despite a 6-2 Southern Conference finish. The pass is complete, but shy of the first down, it will be third and about four 
Boy, I'm really impressed with what Wofford's trying to do offensively, the change of personnel. We see him coming in and out, change of formation. This time they motion the tailback into the boundary and then just throw a little six-yard pass to him to put it in a third and medium situation for him. Now they have a chance to convert here on the 43-yard line of Georgia Southern. Zolman give Jeff Sullivan trying to find some room to run. Victor Cabral said no way. The Toronto Canada native. There's where you kind of wonder whether your script kind of got, got in the way of you there. It's third and uh, about four or five, and you go with the fullback up the middle on third down and four or five. Maybe a play where you'd like to have your quarterback on the edge, but the, but the coaches are sticking with the script. You talked about it. They script 30 plays, which is really unheard of. I've, uh, I remember the 49ers used to script 15 plays or something like that. 30 plays, and they've really done well with it. Well, the Warford Terriers, we haven't gotten out of the first quarter, and they have used all three of their timeouts. Fourth down in three situations. Again, looks like they would like to try to convert this and go for it. They converted for them last time and turned into the Zolman run, the 26-yard run that set up the touchdown. And it looks like Mike Ayers has his offense there, and they're looking at maybe going for it here. 2.09 remaining in this opening quarter. And, of course, Wofford without their star fullback, and we mean a star in every sense of the word, on and off the field, J.R. McNair. Suited up, and Dave, your heart goes out to him. His final year wants to play every second that he possibly can, but suffered an ankle injury two weeks ago against South Carolina State, and he hasn't been able to play effectively since. And he's there all everything. I mean, the guy's a student body president. He, he's in all the clubs here, but uh, just, a sec, uh, just a heck of a ball player. And like you at Iowa State, Phi Beta Kappa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at all, at all the fraternities, certainly, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Bob Rath, but Dave Archer with you from Gibbs Stadium in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And the Southern Conference on Fox Sports Net. We've got a good one brewing here. Number 25, Wofford. Leading number six, Georgia Southern. Another big fourth down play for Zolman and company. It's going to be a toss to Jackson. Way shy of the first down. The Eagles were ready with their lateral pursuit led by Eric White. The linebackers are extremely active for this Georgia Southern football team and a big play by Eric White. James Burchett has already made several plays, but Eric White makes this tackle on the pitch play. Wide pitch play, and you see White gets past the block of Chad Bentley to stop the running back short of the first down. And you could see at the end of that play, it looked like White got a cleat right up in the face, and he's slow to get to his feet. May have rolled an ankle, too. We'll check on him. Now the Eagles drop it, and Williams falls on it at the 39-yard line. The Southern offense is just completely out of sync right now. They've, they've had a couple plays where they got one option. Jermaine Austin has made a few runs in the middle, five, six yards. But nothing really going, and, and, and Chaz Williams is the leader of this offense, and it's going to be up to him to step up and make some plays. Certainly fumbling the snap and putting you in a second and long situation is not going towards those ends. I'm saying on midline. Oh, yeah, midline. Oh, Meanwhile, head coach Mike Ayer is there in the white shirt talking oh, okay. there, yeah. offense we, with his we, quarterback, we Zolman. We still got to read the three. Second down. And coming up is Williams to take it over the 45 to the 46. Zolman discussing with the offensive coordinator and some of the coaches. There's You see Mike Ayers is right there talking about what kind of fronts he's seeing. They're trying to make some adjustments on the sidelines. Zolman's telling them what exactly, where different shades are, the defensive linemen, so they can get the proper blocking schemes and make the play next time they get the football. Third and eight. Georgia Southern with only 40 yards. Williams wants to pass, and it is going to be incomplete. Coming in, Chaz connecting on just 30% of his passes. When they need a pass, he, they have been unable to complete them this season. And Chaz had his receiver open there. Just does not take his time to get his feet set, get around, and make the throw. P.J. Cantrell was open on the sideline, a simple comeback route. Chaz just does not get him the football. Sean Holland is the punter. The deep man is Shield Wood. Single safety at his own 16. Pretty good pressure by Wofford. 
Wood will take it and will gain a couple of yards on the return out to the 28. A 37-yard punt, a 35-yard punt rather, and a seven-yard return by Wood. Wofford has controlled this football game so far from a from a mental standpoint. They've, they've come out, stuffed the ball in the end zone. We do have a flag down on the field now considering whether it may push Georgia Southern across for a first down. I see Chaz Williams coming back out onto the field. And Coach Mike Seawalk of the Georgia Southern Eagles. Lewis Foreman is our referee tonight. Working the kicker. First down. Because see Coach Seawak's already gone to his rally cap. He's already gone to the reverse <laughs> rally hat. I get the sense that he'd like to play. If he could play, he'd go out and play. He'd, put his, he'd strap it up and go out and play. He's done a super job with this, with this uh, school and his yes, team. Yes, he has. A big shoes to fill with all the tradition that Paul Johnson and company left him. Here is Austin, and he fights his way to the 36-yard line. Well, you talk about momentum swings, Dave, and this has got to be a huge one. Walford thinking it's going to get the ball back instead of roughing the kicker turns a fourth down and getting the ball into a first and ten for Georgia Summit. And what do you do when you do as a defense from series to series you hope to stop a high powered offense like this you make the stop then all of a sudden you're thrown back out on the field very difficult to adjust mentally for that. Final seconds of the opening quarter. Williams on the toss gives it to Davis. Davis 10 5 touchdown. The Georgia Southern Eagles get the score with just four and a half seconds to go in the opening quarter. And Kevin Davis, who you mentioned, Dave, really opened some eyes last week at McNeese with a huge run here. Got the good solid run on the first play of this series after the penalty to Austin. And now Chaz Williams with a solid, solid pitch to uh, Kevin Davis. And Davis takes it 36 yards for the touchdown. Watch him ride the fullback. We won't get to see it. Maybe we come back to it. Rides the fullback, then pitches to Davis for the long touchdown run. That's the second time they've been able to run the option to that side and have some success. And the extra point kick by Sean Holland is good. And this game is tied at seven. A 36-yard touchdown run by junior Kevin Davis. There's a simple ride of the fullback. He pulls it and then gets the option. You see Nelson gets caught inside. Nelson's responsibility is the pitch man. He got caught inside the block of the offensive lineman. And Davis got to the outside for the touchdown. A five-play, 59-yard drive ends up in this Davis touchdown. And we talked about the responsibilities of what you have to do against the option. The inside line has to take care of the fullback. That's done. Now the pit, now the quarterback's taken. You see, they tackle Austin. Austin doesn't have the football. There goes Davis down the sidelines. And Matt Nelson, from the from the replays we saw, was responsible for the pick for the pitch there and was was unable to get there. The game is tied at seven. And that's how quickly Georgia Southern can touch you. They just got so they have so many athletes. You grind and grind and grind. And you touched on the fact that how do you adjust? You get the penalty after the punt. You thought you stopped them. Then emotionally you're thrown right back out on the field as a defense. And you're, you're a little bit reeling. And also here comes Austin for six. And Davis goes around the corner for 36. And that's how quickly Georgia Southern can touch you. The Eagles getting even with four and a half seconds remaining in this first quarter and now georgia southern will kick off to wofford jonathan dudley is set to kick it away for the visitors from statesboro georgia and shield wood one of the two deep men for wofford it will be returned bevan stopped at the 16 and that will be the end of the opening quarter the Southern Conference opener for these two teams and a dandy in Spartanburg so far. A lot on the line, revenge for Georgia Southern, and we've had some big hits early. Walker drew first blood, but Georgia Southern is tied it. We're 7 7 at the end of one. College football on Fox Sports Net. And tonight we feature the Southern Conference. And they definitely aren't skeered. 
Because <laughs> they, came, they came out blowing and going in the first quarter. Now the Terriers with the football as we start period two. 7-7. Seven, seven. Wofford and Georgia Southern first and ten for the Terriers. And Zolman wants to pass. Flushed out. Gets away. Can he turn it into some yards? Here come the white shirts. And a big hit on Zolman. Derek Butler. Man, what a hit. The leading tackler on this Georgia Southern defense with 16 made that hit. Let's bring you up to date with what's happening in the league tonight. Appalachian gets its first win. Boy, they struggled at home with Moorhead State today, but they did get the win. Elon knocks off East Tennessee State. Nice comeback for the Phoenix. They've won two straight. Western Carolina over the Citadel in Cullowee, 28 to 21. Gardner Webb up on UTC at the half, 20 to nothing. And a big one over in Greenville tonight with Furman. We'll keep you up to date on that score as well. So stay with us here on Fox Sports Net. Coming around to get the carry is Jackson. And he'll take it over the 20 to the 23. Gabriel Jackson, a sophomore, averaging just over three yards per carry. Another, another try by Wofford, and it was very successful to change direction. You got such great athletes. We saw Butler make the play on Zolman on the scramble in the first play of the series. Here they come with a little reverse. James Young comes out of the secondary clear across the field to make the hit. Wofford tonight 0 for 3 on third down conversions. They are third and four right here. Zolman coming near side. Looking. Going for the stick. Stretches out to the 25. Nose of the football. Maybe to the 26. They may have to measure. Zolman arguing for the spot. He knew, Dave, that he had to stretch it out to get this first down. He had an idea where he needed to be. He's looking for a throw, a short throw. Now he realizes, I've got to make the play. Probably had his feet come out of bounds a couple of yards before the first down. But super effort by the quarterback. And it will be a fourth and two. Jimmy Miner, the punter. We've seen the speed of this man, Lewis Barn, deep for Georgia Southern on the kick return. Let's see what he can do on this punt return. Barr's going to let it bounce. Now Barr picks it up. And out of bounds at the 30. A little daring do by Mr. Barr. Dangerous, very dangerous. A 46-yard punt. I'm sure that uh, Coach Seawak will have a discussion with Mr. Barr either tonight or when they watch the films <laughs> yeah. this week on that one. That one uh, can get away from you quick. And all of a sudden, this momentum that suddenly Georgia Southern has. We had the penalty on the block punt, then two plays and a touchdown. Georgia Southern gets the stop now here in the first series of the second quarter. And now they seem to have the momentum going. Handing it over. And Jermaine Austin brought down by Ben Whitney. Boy, the Southern team just wants to keep coming off and banging on you and banging on you. Austin, this is that's his sixth carry now. Uh, hitting it up in there against this Wofford defense. He's got 30 yards in the game, and and uh, he is we talked about in the opening. He's the guy that they really want to run everything off of. I want to ask you about defending this option attack. Let's see what Georgia Southern comes up with here. Second down. And they go to Davis, and he's tripped up at the 39-yard line. Dave, how difficult is it for a defense when you're facing an offense like Georgia Southern to stay disciplined in your role time after time after time? It's really difficult, and we've seen it already break down a couple times for Wofford. It, it's like being tortured. It's like the water dripping on your forehead. Eventually, it drives you crazy, and that's what this offense does. It eventually drives you crazy on defense. And I would think as a defensive back... You've really got to be careful because if you keep creeping up time after time, that's when they can pop a pass over your head. But when you got a running back like this man, Jermaine Austin, look at him go. Breaking tackle after tackle gets to the 48. And he ran through a good one, ran right through Nelson about 10 yards downfield. 13-yard gain, just a battering ram, 5'8 and 198 pounds. Had 140 yards last week against McNeese State. Now watch the big hit. He delivers the Nelson right here. And right on. Keeps right on chugging. 43 yards on seven carries for Jermaine Austin. First and 10, Georgia Southern. Ah! 
toss. Spinning to the outside, T.J. Anderson. And he gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Georgia Southern is going after an unprecedented seventh consecutive Southern Conference championship. Since they reinstituted football in the 80s, Georgia Southern has won six national championships. This is a staggering statistic. The men of Mike Seawalk, they have not lost to the same team since 1997. <laughs> Appalachian beat them in 96, beat them in 97. They have avenged every defeat since. Playoffs or regular season. Jazz back, pressured, and he is going to take the sack. Back at the 47-yard line. Teddy Whitaker coming up from his outside linebacker spot. His third sack of the season. Whitaker had an outstanding game two weeks ago against South Carolina State. Had seven tackles and a couple of sacks. Here he shows his athleticism. We've been talking about the Southern linebackers. Here's one of Wofford's linebackers. He's a good one. Teddy Whitaker makes the play on the 2002 Southern Conference Player of the Year, Chaz Williams. Now, third and 15. Jazz back to pass. Looking, and over the middle, it is going to be complete after it was nearly intercepted by the middle linebacker, Thrift. P.J. Cantrell maintained his concentration, and oh, look what I found at the 40-yard line. But this, is it enough for a first down? I think he's going to be just shy on the play, Bob. But it's unbelievable this ball isn't picked off. It's literally thrown right to Thrift, the linebacker, but he cannot hang on and credit the athleticism of Cantrell to come down with it and put it in a manageable situation now. This is kind of what they like here. Georgia Southern going to go for it here on, on fourth down. Fourth down and two yards to go. And Georgia Southern is going to burn a timeout here. They use their first of three first-half timeouts. The Eagles will chat, and we'll step aside with our score 7-7 in Spartanburg. 7-7, our score second quarter. Georgia Southern using a timeout. First, let's get you up to date with the NFL, the undisputed champs of the pregame shows. J.B., Terry, Howie, and Jimmy analyze the Redskins. Hot start and break down whether or not they have what it takes to keep it up this season. It's all coming up, the NFL Sunday pregame show, 12 noon Eastern, only on Fox. Georgia Southern trying to convert a fourth down and two here. They have failed on one fourth down attempt. The give is to Austin. He keeps stretching. It's just going to depend on the spot. It's very close to Bob. I'm going to say he's got it. But that quick call. The eagle eye of Dave Archer. <laughs> I think he's straight. A little stretch from Austin right at the end of the run. Was laying on, laying on one of his offensive linemen, stretched out, and they gave him that little extra foot or so, and that's going to get him the first down. The stretch of the chains, no doubt about it. Yeah, and the people don't realize that how far we are from the field. I mean, that was a pretty good call. Excellent. <laughs> no, we're right on top of the action here at this beautiful stadium here, Gibbs Stadium here at Spartanburg, South Carolina, on the campus of Wofford College. Beautiful place. It is a tremendous facility. This is the a school that has an enrollment of just over 1,100. And fantastic facilities. Spring training camp of the Carolina Panthers. Williams over the 30 to the 26 and a good run. This is one of those chances when you're an option type offense as Georgia Southern is. They run, they run, they run. Here Austin gets the fake and now we're going to take our shot at you. We're going to try to throw the ball downfield. Great decision by Chaz Williams to pull it down. He realizes my best option is to run with the football. If he's able to stay on his feet there, he gets in the end zone. 12 yard gain. First down and 10. Austin over the 20, down to the 18. Matt Nelson with the tackle, but not before another big gain by Austin. This is a kid who, Dave, is a sophomore. He's played coming into this game tonight 16 career games. Nine times he's rushed for over 100 yards. Well, he's such a tough back on the on once contact comes, he gets that extra two or three yards. Williams on the 
toss. T.J. Anderson, 10. Five, touchdown, Georgia Southern takes the lead. A 19-yard gain. Wonderful block up front to spring him loose. So the option has begun to give him problems because Austin has given Wofford problems on the inside. The fake to Austin, and then Anderson's going to come around the end. There's take the quarterback. Now watch the block from Albert Turner right there. The block from Albert Turner, 73, down the field. That's a big offensive lineman, 270-pounder, down the field, springing his back for the touchdown. And the kick is good. Georgia Southern takes the lead. 14-7 at Wofford with eight minutes and 19 seconds left in the second quarter. On the option, T.J. Anderson turns, and he is gone. Georgia Southern 14, Wofford 7 in the second quarter. This week's TIAA Craft Student Athlete of the Week is Eve Van Harpen. Eve is a member of the Wofford women's soccer team, a 3.53 GPA in biology. She is from Rhinelander, Wisconsin. For more information on the TIAA Craft Academic Awards program, go to SoConSports.com. It is a little pricey here at Wofford. 27000 for one full year. Of course, uh, Fox Sports Net comes your way free of charge, but seeing their team repeat, they, they've got their work cut out for this. They do. That roughing the kicker penalty on the punt was a big momentum changer. Yeah, I think it, it all stems back to that play. Uh, they had stopped, uh, Wofford had stopped Georgia Southern. Southern was struggling offensively. Uh, Chaz Williams had dropped a snap. They were in second and long, got stuffed again. And then all of a sudden, the roughing the punter call. Two plays later, Davis goes 36 for a touchdown. Wofford in his last two drives, failing on a, to convert a fourth down, yielding the football, then a punt. How important is it now to put something together on this drive? Well, it's very important, not only just for their offense, it's for the psyche of the whole team and for their defense to rest. Defense has been on the field significant over the last 10 minutes. Trey Rogers comes in at quarterback. Keeps it, finds a hole, and weaves his way to the 25. Trey Rogers, a junior from Dorman High in Spartanburg. And this is not a reflection on how Zolman's playing. What it is is a change If Somebody else sees things a little bit differently. He might run things a little bit differently. He might check to something differently along the line of scrimmage and give you a little bit of a spark. We mentioned that Eric White the weak side linebacker for Georgia Southern had been injured earlier in the game. He's out, in fact, and John Mooring has come in at that linebacking post. Now, penalty flag. And this is another thing you get. All of a sudden, now you have a different count. You got a different quarterback. Now, his voice sounds a little different than Zolman's voice does. Your offensive line is already antsy. They're wanting to come off the ball and hit the guy in front of them in the mouth. And now, a little sound that sounds a little bit like go, and, and uh, you get the uh, false start call. And now, Instead of it being second and medium, which is five yards, now you're second and long, second and ten. Second penalty against Wofford. That first one we talked about, that roughing the kicker on the punt. And after that, Kevin Davis took it in from 36 yards away. Georgia Southern tied the game. Now T.J. Anderson's touchdown has put them in front. Second and ten for the Terriers. This one is going to be taken out of bounds. A toss that went awry. Well, he checked, it. he checked the option play weak side. When they went motion across the formation, Georgia Southern's defense slid to the strength. They went option weak side, and the uh, pitch was it. So here's the option weak side. Good, good fake there. Gets outside, but then he wants to get it to his back on the edge right now because he realizes the linebacker's pinched to the inside. The pitch was just wasn't accurate. Things breaking down for Mike Ayers and company. 0 for 4 on third downs tonight. Rodgers cranks, throws, and this is incomplete. Threw it into a crowd. Well, you can bet on the fact that it's going to be difficult to convert on third down if you're third down and 12. This was not what they were doing in the first quarter. If we remember, we get back to it. They were getting three, four, five yards on plays, and they were keeping themselves in manageable situations. When you're a featured running attack and you have to be a third and 13, third and 12, very difficult to convert. They only convert on 34% of the third downs anyway. So third and 13 is very difficult. Jimmy Miner is the punter. 
Lewis Barr, the deep man, with speed, as we've seen tonight. High snap, control. This one angling out of bounds, and we'll see where the officials marked it across the line. Still walking. And at the 45-yard line of Wofford, just a 25-yard punt. And Miner, of course, is a penalty flag on the play. Miner is such a wonderful punter. And the penalty will go against Georgia Southern, but still going to be fourth down. Well, what it does is it gives them a chance to punt the ball again because Miner may be one of his worst punts of the season, only a 25-yard kick. He's trying to keep the ball away from Barr, uh, but... You know, kicking the ball out of bounds, you're also sacrificing some yardage on your punt. I think what they'd like to do is have him punt the ball somewhere between the numbers and the sideline, pin bar to the sideline, and then try to come and rally and make the play. Cut the field down for him. They don't want to kick it right down the middle of the field to him because we've already seen what he can do on a kickoff return. He's had a little difficulty, his bar, handling some of the punts and kickoffs this season, but when he can secure it cleanly. On the receiving team, 10-yard foul, post-scrimmage kick enforcement, first down. So it ends up being a 35-yard kick or what? a 15-yard penalty. Maybe it's a, yeah, it's a 15-yard penalty. It becomes a 40-yard kick, a 25-yard kick, and then the 15-yard penalty. So it essentially ends up like a, it would have been a 40-yard punt for him. And it moves it back to the, what, the 40-yard line? 45-yard line. Just had an update on Eric White, the Georgia Southern linebacker a hamstring strain and he is out for the rest of the game but he was playing really well too when he when he went down made the big hit on the sideline evidently strained the hamstring on the big hit nonetheless excellent field position for georgia southern as chance williams goes to work throws on first down and this one is going to be caught at the 40-yard line and stretching to the 38-yard line is teddy craft 17-yard pickup Wofford's begun to hug the line of scrimmage and try to take away the run. The Southern coaches see that, and they make a throw, and credit Kraft. That ball's thrown way too far inside, but Kraft came to the football and made the play. That's a nice play by Teddy Kraft. When they watch the films come tomorrow, uh, Chaz Williams will be patting him, patting Kraft on the back because he saved interception there. Chaz gives to Austin. And Jermaine to the 35-yard line. Teddy Whitaker the tackle. When Georgia Southern throws the football, all they're doing is trying to, to loosen the defense. They don't want to feature the throwing attack. As we've seen, Chaz is a little bit off on his accuracy. He has a great arm. His accuracy is just a little off. This is what they want to do. They want to feature Austin and the option. And penalty flags. Movement up front for the Eagles. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Chad Motes, the guilty party. This is a key sequence for both teams. And the fact for Georgia Southern, if they could punch one across here, now you, it's a 21-7 hole for, for Wofford to try to climb out of it. On the other side, if Wofford can make a stop, maybe they can get the momentum back and try to get some more field position for their offense. On second and 12, Williams on the toss to Austin. Breaks a tackle, 35, still going. Wonderful runner, Jermaine Austin. 5.50 and counting, second quarter. We're at Gibbs Stadium on the Wofford College campus. Top 25 matchup in 1AA, the Southern Conference opener for these two teams. Bob Rath and Dave Archer with you. And it is 14 to 7, Georgia Southern in front. Austin has carried the ball 11 times for 62 yards. Brandon Andrews is the lone setback. The toss goes to T.J. Anderson. To the 30. It will be fourth and a yard and a half. Good play out there by Craig Thomas to stop him short of the first down on the option pitch. And now, obviously, this is a situation where Southern loves to go for it. They seem to have a command of the line of scrimmage right now. It wouldn't surprise me a bit to coach, see Coach Suak go here. It was about oh, the last five minutes of that first quarter. You could tell that line surge for Georgia Southern starting to pick up. Yeah, they're really starting to play the game on the Wofford side of the line of scrimmage. And as a team that likes to run the football, that's your goal in any game. Mm -hmm. 
Now Chaz wants to take a timeout. Second timeout used by Georgia Southern this half. They have one remaining. 434 left in the period. 14-7 leaders over Walker. Georgia Southern 14, Wofford 7, second quarter for extended regional highlights and in-depth interviews. Catch the Southern Sports Report coming up right after our game. Pam Oliver lets us in on some NFL surprises. It was make or break day for some top teams in the SEC and in-depth coverage of the Georgia Tech Clemson game tonight in Atlanta. That's all coming up right after the game on Fox Sports Net. So after using a timeout, Georgia Southern looking at this fourth down and two. Chaz will toss it to T.J. Anderson, and he's got the first down at the 25. Anderson showing good speed to the outside tonight. Junior from Lithonia, Georgia. There's so many weapons on this Georgia Southern offense. They give you Kevin Davis a, good, a steady diet of that early in the game. Now the they're going to give it to Wofford. The officials first indicated first down. Then they huddled. Craig Thomas comes out of there with a the ball. And Wofford's going to get it. Boy, it looked from here that play had long since been dead. Let's, let's see if we can see that ball pop out, Dave. P.J. hits it up in there and a, a good head-on-head -head stick right there. And then watch. There it is. Ooh, awful close. And then Thomas ends up falling right on the ball. See if the shoulder hits the ground. Nope, ball comes out. Good call by the officials. So a fumble. Stymies Georgia Tech, uh, Georgia Southern, and that has been their story. Incomplete pass on the near side. Georgia Southern has really struggled, Dave, with their turnovers. They came into the game minus seven in giveaway takeaways. And that's what Wofford uh, did so well against South Carolina State a couple weeks ago, forcing six fumbles, seven fumbles, and ended up in, uh, getting six of them. Big, big play by their defense to try to give their offense a chance to get jump-started back into this game. Not a good start when you drop a pass on first down for your quarterback, though. Wofford does not have a timeout at its disposal if they can put a nice drive together here. Late in the second quarter in Spartanburg. Quarterback keeper Rodgers on the option. Takes it himself, close to a first down. Nine-yard pickup. Trey Rogers running the option play to the weak side. Good solid fake to the fullback. Reads it. Now steps around. Nobody's there for the for the quarterback. Young has to come up and make the play. Rogers made a nice throw on first down. The ball was dropped. He picks up his team with a nice run to put him in a third and short situation. 0 for 5 on third down conversions. Terriers work out of the gun. Quarterback keeps it. Rogers runs it for the first down up to the 38. We're seeing two really good running teams. And Dave, I, I have to ask you, you know, you were such a great passer in college at Iowa State, long time in the NFL, long time in Canada and the CFL playing. One of your re great regrets in life is the fact that you didn't have a chance to run the option and just run all over the place. Yeah, I, I would have loved to have been able to pull it down like one of these guys and go 60 for a touchdown. I didn't have those kind of skills. You would have been such a great option quarterback. <laughs> No, he just wanted to throw it all day. Speaking of throwing the football, a completed pass out to the 45-41 yard line. Nice throw, strong throw on the run by Rogers, and the reception made by Shield Wood, a 20-yard gain. Boy, you hit it right on the head. This is a very strong throw. Just a roll left. Watch him square his shoulders right there. See him square his shoulders and get downhill with his body. He can get over the top of that front foot and make a nice solid throw to Wood. And now Walker gets something going offensively. Three minutes, 15 seconds remaining, quarter number two. Trey Rogers, quarterbacking his second series tonight and looking good, keeps it, runs it, and runs into trouble. John Mooring, the weak side linebacker, the first man to get there, and we mentioned he's the second team linebacker. He'll play extensively in this game now as he is in for the injured Eric White. This is a play where they want to ride. He rides the fullback. Then he's just going to follow him into the hole. Mooring stays home and makes a solid hit just one yard downfield. Second down and nine. 
at the Georgia Southern 39-yard line. 14-7 Eagles and on the end around. And another tremendous hit by Mooring. Man, is this kid made two great plays back to back. That was even more impressive than the last one right there. He played off a block and now he's got a speedster out in the flat and he makes a super play. Let's see play off the block. He stays, he keeps his contain point, plays off the block, and now this is a guy out in space with a running back that's supposed to win those situations. Not this time. Mooring puts him right on his back. Third and ten. Mooring out of Naples, Florida. Fake option pitch. Coming near side and knocked out of bounds. On the game, Gabriel Jackson. That, uh, by going out of bounds, stops the clock with 148 left in the hand. It will be fourth down, and let's call it a yard. Wofford, of course, will go for it. They are one for two on fourth down. We say, of course, because regardless of field position, uh, they opt to go for it more, more times than not on fourth down. Fourth and one without a timeout, down seven. Rogers keeps it. Well, this kid has changed the flavor of the Wofford offense. He really has, and he see, and that's what happens with the quarterback. And we've got a late penalty flag here now, uh, maybe a taunting call or something after the run. A lot of jawing going on between the two teams. But you hit it right on the head. Uh, Rodgers has come in and seen things a little differently, and, and credit him there. He saw a little crease. He knew he needed a yard, and he hit it up in there and turned it into a nice six-yard pickup. Let's see if he gets negated. After the play was over, on Sportsman Live, on the offense, 15-yard penalty, first down. So the play stands, but the penalty yardage backs him up. I remember several coaches telling me in my playing days and everybody that I played with that no one's worth a 15-yard penalty. I mean, these yards come, they're so hard to come by. You see both these teams battling for yards. You see we're talking about a fourth and one play where you're hitting it up in there, and then you lose 15 because of a silly penalty because you can't keep yourself focused on the game. And all this is is a lack of focus. Suddenly you want to flip the ball on a player after you've made a run. I know no room for that in the game. And what you've done is you have, you've hurt your team. You put your team in a bad situation. Let's see if Wofford now can overcome the penalty and get back into scoring range. Only 141 left here in the first half. And the other fact to, to consider, too, for Wofford, they really don't have a place kicker they trust to kick a field goal. They've got a untested freshman in that role. Johnson up the middle. Devious tackled by Derek Butler to the 37. Wofford can't stop the clock. They burned all three of their first half timeouts in the opening quarter. Georgia Southern has one timeout at its disposal. We have let's see, second down and seven. And Trey Rogers will work out of the gun. Rogers throws it away. Intended for Jackson on the near side. That stops it with 52.7 seconds left. They go to a spread package to try to get several people out into the route. Southern has had, Georgia Southern's having a tough time adjusting and lining up properly. There were a couple of receivers ran open on the play, but uh, Rodgers did not see them on that, on that particular throw. Now third and seven here from the Southern 37-yard line. The 11th play of the drive coming. Rodgers looks for a hole and finds it. 30, he's outside of the 25, gets a block. Try to get outside and get out of bounds. Stopping the clock with 44.5. Boy, I like the way this kid runs the ball. He really has. Three things happened on that play. He saw the crease and hit it up in there. And then at the end of the run, I want to watch, I want you to watch. The quarterback draw, two good blocks there. He hits. Now watch him cut the sideline. Watch Wood not block the man in the back. He does not clip the player. And then, of course, Rodgers gets out of bounds to, to stop the clock. 44 and a half seconds left before halftime. 14-7, Georgia Southern. Toss to the outside, Gabriel Jackson. And he's ridden out of bounds at the 19. That's 
They are not stopping the clock. The clock continues to run. Now it stops at 37.3. And the Wofford coaches are bidding, bidding for more time. This is uh, Nick Robinson, number 27, their freshman kicker, who, as we mentioned earlier, has not played a football game, high school, you name it, in his life before he kicked two weeks ago against South Carolina State. He may be asked to try to kick a field goal here. On the play, getting to the outside is Gabriel Jackson, and he takes it down to the 12-yard line, 28. 27 seconds they want to ground it here to stop the clock and set up a fourth down and maybe a field goal attempt now the officials will stop the clock and measure for a first down that? because what it, a looked break. Like, it looked like they were going to be short of the first down and they were going to have to kill the clock and 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 give up their opportunity to may get the first down and take a shot in the end zone they're going to have to give up that opportunity by killing the clock and get their kicking team on and kick the field goal now they get the clock stopped, and now they could get a play in and maybe go for the first down. They've come up just shy. It looks for the first down. Yeah, Nick has not tried. Nick uh, Nick Robinson, the kicker, you talked about he has not played in any game. <laughs> he hadn't even tried a field goal this season. He's, big. He's kicked five extra points, and that's it. But this gives them, a, this gives Wofford an opportunity to run another offensive play, pick up the first down, kill the clock with the move well, of the chains, and well they the can clock take a shot at the end zone. The first down right, they can take college. a shot at the end zone if they can kill the kill the clock with the first down here. So here we go, 22.6 remaining in the second quarter. We'll send it to our studios in Atlanta. Bob Pacella, Laura Oakman standing by. They'll bring you up today with a very busy Saturday of college football. On third down, inside. Let's see, to the 10, yes, he's got the first down. Rushing onto the field is the kick team with 16.6. And here is Nick Robinson. It is going to be a 26-yard attempt, his first try in his life, a field goal. And it is wide to the left. I don't say I don't think that the managing of the clock there was the right situation. They got the clock stopped with 16.6 seconds left. You go ahead and ground the ball at that point as, a, as your, your quarterback ground the football. Go ahead and throw it in the ground. Now your clock stopped. You don't have to rush your kicking team onto the field and get the kick before the clock runs out. You even get an opportunity maybe to take a shot in the end zone with a throw, then get your kicking team on the field and get the kick. I think maybe a mismanagement of the clock at that situation may be bad decision making uh, to get your kick team on at that point. So the score remains 14-7. And Georgia Southern will take a knee and this first half will come to an end. The Georgia Southern Eagles looking to avenge last year's 14-7 defeat in Statesboro have a 14-7 lead this year at halftime. Well, we pointed towards that roughing the kicker penalty and what happened after the roughing mm -hmm. the kicker penalty. And I've got the stats here. As it turned out, they had 40, Georgia Southern had 42 yards before it. After the roughing the kicker call, 142 yards and a touchdown, including this touchdown by T.J. Anderson. T.J. Anderson put him in front, and that's where we stand. To our studios in Atlanta after these words. We welcome you back to halftime here in Spartanburg with Georgia Southern leading Wofford by a score of 14 to 7. Bob Rathbun, Dave Archer back with you here in the booth. And Dave, an outstanding first half of football. No doubt about that. It really was. Both teams played extremely clean. A couple of little things hurt Georgia Southern from getting another couple of scores. But credit Wofford for hanging in. Made a nice defensive stand late here in the first, in the, in the first half to keep this game close. All right, sir. Let's take a look at our first half highlights. And the first highlight comes compliments of the Wofford Terriers as Johnson takes it in from two yards away. Just the offensive line coming off the ball and beating it in there. Good early score for Wofford. Georgia Southern missing on a 40-yard field goal. That kept the Terriers in front by a 7 to nothing score. But then on the toss, here's Kevin Davis going 36. Kevin Davis was a huge factor in the first half, had two long runs, and that one was for a touchdown, 36-yard touchdown run. And T.J. Anderson putting the Eagles on top. The offensive line blocking downfield, that was Parker getting, or Bentley getting the block downfield to spring. Anderson 
Then Anderson again carries the football. And this time it's jarred loose, and Thomas comes up with the fumble recovery to set up maybe a field goal to attempt. It was we didn't think the clock was managed quite properly there at the end of the first half, but a missed field goal for Wofford and a chance to close the gap against Georgia Southern. A well, look at the first half statistics and Georgia Southern racking up the rushing yards is, of course, their custom with 153 in that first half. But overall, the yardage tilting in Wofford's big. Yeah, the two teams are playing extremely well. Both of them are moving the football. I think the only mistake that Georgia Southern made, the fumble to stop the drive, it maybe could have put them up 21-7. They get the stop, Wofford gets the stop, and then they go down the other end of the field. But Georgia Southern's laid the ball on the ground three times. Only one is a turnover, but the other two put them in second and long situations when they recover their own fumbles. Dave Archer, we talk so often about momentum in a football game, and here is Wofford getting a little head of steam to end that first half, albeit they did not score. Now Georgia Southern, after winning the toss, will get the football to start the third quarter. How important is it going to be for these Terriers to come out and stop Georgia Southern and not get two touchdowns down. Well, it's very important. And a lot of coaches will tell you the most important time in a game is that five minutes of the second half. That's when you're going to establish who's going to make that push to win the football game. Southern's going to get that first opportunity to have the football. Let's take a look at the possession time. Wofford held it for a minute and a half more, ran nine more plays, and yet they trailed by a touchdown. Well, I think that says that they're doing a good job of moving the football. They've run more plays. They've had the ball uh, a little longer, a little about a minute and a half longer. But what it tells me is that they're moving the ball and they're keeping Georgia Southern's defense on the field. And that was important. Coach Ayers wanted to keep Southern's offense off the field because that's where all their big plays are made. And, and they've done that to a certain extent in the first half. What did you make of the quarterback change for Wofford? I thought that Trey Rogers came on and really did a fine job. I agree with you. A huge spark. Rogers comes off, and it wasn't so much that Zolman wasn't making some plays. He did. He made the nice run to set up their first touchdown. But when Rogers came in, there's a little spark, and that's what the coach is hoping for. You change one piece of the puzzle at your quarterback, he might see things a little differently, and he certainly kick-started the offense. So we're getting set for the start of the third quarter here from Spartanburg. And a night where the Southern Conference is getting this uh, league play underway in fine fashion. A wonderful game at Cullowee with Western Carolina winning over the Citadel. And now we've got a tough tight one here between Georgia Southern and Wofford and Zolman warming up. Of course, uh, the Terriers will be on defense to start this third quarter as we get set for the kickoff here. Well, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Ayers decides to do with his quarterback situa situation, whether Zolman comes back and is his guy to start the second half and then brings Rodgers again off the bench. Rodgers ended up being the leading rusher for Wofford in the first half with seven carries and 40 yards. So here we go. Jay Harvey set to kick it to Lewis Barr of Georgia Southern. <laughs> Barr in the first half had one kick return for 44 yards. Barr will take this one at his five. Nice little pocket, closes quickly. Barr dances his way to the 29. Trying to get the football out of his uh, hands, but unsuccessful. And Barr with a good return, first and 10 for Georgia Southern. To contain a guy like that, Barr is so dangerous. Is you have to be very disciplined on your special teams, and everybody has to stay in their lanes. Each guy is assigned about a four or five yard lane as he runs down the field. Must maintain that lane even though you're being blocked. Good job by Wofford's coverage team to do that there. Interesting numbers, Dave, on Chance Williams in that first half. He passed it better, two out of three, but only seven yards rushing in six attempts. Yeah, they featured Austin. Williams will take it on this attempt and on to the 32-yard line. It's interesting to note that in Chaz Williams' time at quarterback at Georgia Southern, when he has been held to fewer than 100 yards, the Georgia Southern record is 1-5, and five, and that win was Savannah State earlier this year. Well, that tells, him how, it tells you how important he is to this offense, and I think he's continued to keep Austin involved. Obviously, the pitches that he was making to Anderson and to Davis were key. Second and long. Williams with the keep. And it's going to be third and about three. 
he has such good vision on the option because you have to see through things, almost a 3D type of vision. You're not only looking for the man that has a char is in charge of pitch, uh, making you pitch the football, but you're also reading behind that. Who's taking the pitch? Is there a lane I can duck it back up underneath? And that's exactly what he did there. Third and three. Jazz up to 14 yards. So he's matched his first half output here in this opening drive of the third quarter. Williams bad toss. This one, fortunately for Georgia Southern, will roll out of bounds. But boy, they got away with one that time. They really did. That was a poor decision because uh, the player in charge of the pitch was right there. And uh, Chaz, and Coach Seawalk, was wanting him to turn that one up. Here you see that the man in charge of the pitch is right coming out, right out, right there. The hit made. He was coming. Teddy Whitaker had the quarterback covered. So a good job of Wofford's defense. And here it is. They made a nice three and out defensively, forced, forced Georgia Southern into a punt. Sean Holland is the punter. Shield Wood is going to make the fair catch at the 27-yard line, a 38-yard punt. So three and out for Georgia Southern. If you're a Wofford fan just with the doctor ordered, now you get your offense back on the field, which made a nice drive at the end of the first half, which resulted into the missed field goal, but should have a little bit of momentum. Let's see who comes out at quarterback here. It looks like Zolman will start the first half or the second half here at quarterback. Jeff from Dayton, Ohio. Brother Greg, quarterback at Vanderbilt in the 2000-2001 season. Back at the helm. And he is going to hand it over to Gabriel Jackson up to the 24-yard line. It's fun to watch what, uh, what coaches do at halftime when they come out to see what kind of adjustments make, they make. This time... Wofford comes out in a stacked eye and then motions the third back out into the right side as an additional block and just an eye iso play strong side. Nice pickup. An inside handoff to Sullivan. Derek Butler there to meet him. Boy, I'm really impressed with the linebacking core of Georgia Southern. They seem to be all over the field. Uh, Butler, Burchett, Eric White before the injury. Uh, Moorings made a whole bunch of plays. Uh, they just are very active. It seems like they just don't stay blocked for very long. Third down and short. And here's something you don't see is the, uh, the opposing team trying to get their crowd up on the other side of the field. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Eagles fans travel well. And a lot of them up to support their Eagles on the road tonight. Zolman trying to turn the corner. Stretching for the first down. Let's see where they mark his progress. Derek Butler coming through again. And you'll see him on the pursuit. Watch Butler flow down the line. He's got to keep people off of his feet. You see him running side to side. Now the quarterback is mine. He makes a tackle. Does Zoman stretch long enough to get the first down? This is going to be very close. Time called as the chain gang comes across. 14-7, Georgia Southern. Short by that much. Boy, with these two teams, this game is the true essence of a game of inches because these two teams are fighting for every yard, every inch they get. So another fourth down try for Wofford here. And you don't, yeah, and here, here's the ball on your own 37-yard line in a 14-7 game in the third quarter. <laughs> and we're going to, there's no hesitation by Coach Jared. We're going to go ahead and go for this. Fourth and inches. down to the spot of the football. Yeah, is it a left foot or a right foot spot, which ends up giving you the first down? It looks like he spotted it with his left foot, which is about half a football, and that's all he got that by. Wofford's 10th first down. Now let's see what the Terriers are thinking. 
Well, Southern did what, or uh, Wofford did what they wanted to do to start off. They wanted to get a first down and move the chains. Now the ball, they've shortened the field for themselves. This time working out of the eye with a man in motion. The give is to Kevius Johnson. And Kevius over the 50 and out to the 48-yard line. A 40, a run on the play of 15 yards. We've been watching Derek Butler. What happens to him here? Watch Kevius Jackson get the block. Gabriel Jackson's extra running back. Super blocked by Kevius Johnson to free Aaron, ja uh, to Gabriel Jackson to get up here. Here's the block again. Got right into the legs. We talked about this athletic linebacking core. Kevius Johnson switches it up. There's a super athlete wearing number 20, wearing a black jersey tonight, too. Another first down for the Terriers. This time they work out of the gun. And this is Johnson. High stepping through at the 40. To the 35 to the 32-yard line. And a late flag flies in at the end of this. With a late hit or maybe using the helmet a little bit too much on the tackle at the end of the run. Super run by Kevius Johnson. Makes the block and then runs the off-tackle play for a big gain for this offense. One staff that caught our eye about Johnson. Here's the play call from uh, Lewis Foreman. After the play was over, personal foul on the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, a big gain got bigger. Good blocking up front. You see Burchett's on the ground, which tells you the offensive line is coming off the ball. Watch the linebacker, 51, end up on the ground right there, and then Johnson uses the athleticism to get more yardage. There's your late hit. Mooring. Late Mooring hit. trying to get that shot. Johnson Johnson blocked him on the play previous. He wanted to get a little late hit on him. First and 10 at the 18. Devious Johnson to the 15. The stat I was talking about for Johnson is that coming in, averaging six yards per carry. Not bad for a freshman. That's not bad for anybody. He hasn't hurt himself tonight either. He's running the football with a purpose. A 14-7 lead, but that in jeopardy. Kevius Johnson, nine carries, 52 yards. And he's right at his average a little bit better. Get some wiggle room to the outside. Just a, a little crossbuck, a little misdirection again. Again, these are plays you throw in to keep the, the defense honest. You know, we talked about the athleticism of the linebackers. Even in the front, the front group, this front seven for Georgia Southern all can run. You want to keep them at home to set up your ability to run the ball on the edge with the option. All right, Mr. Play Caller. Third down and about six. I think you get right back to having uh, Zolman on the edge with uh, with the ability to pitch the ball or run it. Wofford, three of ten on conversion. Play clock at three. They get it off in plenty of time. Zolman looks for a seam. And to the ten, he's going to be short a couple of yards. McIntyre jumped on his back. Big Erica, Jr., 6'1", 257. I don't see him rushing the field goal unit onto the field here. <laughs> I think we're going to get it. They're going to they're going to go ahead and put it in the hands of the team they feel the most the, the most confidence in, and that's that big offensive line up front, and in Zolman's hands to try to make a play. Fourth and two. Zolman touchdown. And a penalty flag. This one's coming back. Illegal motion. It looked like one of the wingbacks might have moved a count early on the play, and it really destroys. Uh, tremendous execution on this play because Kevius Johnson gets a tremendous block on the edge to give Zolman the crease to hit it up in there and run for the touchdown. Illegal motion on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. Coach Ayers guessing who that was. Watch your, see your wing back at the top of the screen there. Gets a little bit of a jump. Watch these two blocks. Kevius Johnson 20 right there. And then the lineman downfield gets a little, little pop 
and Zolman stretches with that with uh, the effort he's shown all night to get it in the end zone, but all for naught. 32. Try another field goal here. 32 yard attempt by Nick Robinson, the freshman from Deland, Florida, an all-region soccer player trying his best to do some place kicking for this Wofford team. Missed a field goal at the end of the first half. His first field goal attempt of his life. High snap. This one is blocked. And it is going to be rolling around over the 40 and down at the 45-yard line. Well, that play was in trouble from the start. High snap. Uh, the holder had a tough time getting the ball down. Brandon Starks was trying to hold. Could not get the ball down. Aaron Whitaker breaks through to block it, number 26. Watch the high snap. Can, tough time getting it down. And then Whitaker comes through clean. Whitaker is untouched around the edge. Looked like the, because the ball was high, the kick was a hair late. It allowed Whitaker to get there and get the hand on the block. So Georgia Southern with the football. First and 10 at their own 45-yard line. And Jermaine Austin. Oh, a couple of yards out to about the 47. Number 95, John Presley. The change in field position is, is incredible, how things go back and forth. Wofford gets the stop early in the third quarter, gets the ball, and then they drive the length of the field, and you get a blocked field goal. And now here Georgia Southern is with their offense on the field and a short field to go. So Wofford went 10 plays, but no points. Williams on the pitch, and they had it covered. Timmy Thrift with the big tackle on T.J. Anderson. Thrift has had an outstanding game, rolling down the line of scrimmage, obviously in charge of the pitch from what they're doing defensively. He's, been, he's made several plays and forced it right at the line of scrimmage. Thrift will flow along the line of scrimmage, 44, play off the block, and make the play on Anderson. Third down. And nine as Chaz wants to throw. He's pressured. Escapes Thrift. Now throws, and it's incomplete. Well shy of the intended receiver, T.J. Anderson. I'll tell you what, Wofford is very well schooled. There's a flag down on the play. Very well schooled with not getting sucked in on these play fakes and the long throws. You're so often when you have a team that runs the option and you're pounding, pounding with the option, all of a sudden the guy comes out Scott clean on a pass. Wofford has stayed at home, been very well coached to stay with the receivers. No big plays given up for the passing game. Big discussion, Mike Seawag. Scratching his head. Let's see what the penalty is. It's against his Eagles. Personal foul. And and even though this is a change of possession situation, might not be a bad A to go ahead and move him back 15. They're not going to do it, though. Maybe move him. My thought was move him back 15. After the play was over, personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty to be fourth down. And they... Oh, they did go ahead. It was a dead ball foul, so they got the 15-yard penalty anyway, and they're forced into a punting situation. The fourth penalty against Georgia Southern. The deep man is Shield Wood, Sean Holland, number 82, to punt it for the Eagles. Midway through the third here in Spartanburg, 14-7. Georgia Southern with the lead, but Wofford looking to gain in field position here after the punt. Penalty flag. A high booming punt by Holland. Wood backing to his own 20. Gets away from one man, but can't escape the white shirts downfield of the 27, a seven-yard return after a 50-yard punt. But the question of the penalty to be decided. A little false start. Looks like he'll have to try to, to hit that one again. Mike is not happy. No, you don't often get your kicker to pound one out of their 50 yards, and it equalized the field position situation. Now he's going to have to repeat the performance. Illegal formation on the kicking team. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. I don't want to be in the film room when they go over that one. <laughs> Yeah, that's a mental error. Somebody's supposed to be on the line of scrimmage and was not. You can bet on the fact that uh, 
Coach Steele ought to have a, follow, have a talk with that person. I think he's going he's to have several discussions <laughs> he has a uh, on film day. It is Cat time. <laughs> he doesn't look like he's one of those guys that lets any stone go unturned. So on fourth and 29, Holland has to kick it again after you mentioned, Dave, that 50 yarder. Handles the low snap. And Wood will catch it, and he is dropped immediately. No return. Terrence McBride downfield to make a good play after a 47 yard punt by Sean Holland. Timeout from Spartanburg. Look at these wackos. 14 to 7. Wackos. Is our Those are the guys that are throwing them in the mud pit last <laughs> night over at the fraternity. My kind of guy. <laughs> Fantasy football players, listen up. Now there's a show just for you. 30 minutes of who to start, who to sit, and who you need to pick up. The ultimate fantasy football show, Saturday night and Sunday morning only on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings for start times in your area. Bob Rathman, Dave Archer with you from Spartanburg. It's a 14-7 lead for the visitors from Statesboro. 7-15 left in the third quarter. And the Terriers ready out of the gun. He's on a quick handoff, and Eric McIntyre says, no way. Evius Johnson denied. Second and long. Well, Wofford has not had a problem moving the football the last two times they've touched it. Right before the end of the first half, had a nice drive. 14 play drive at four minutes and 30 seconds missed the field goal come back to open up the second half with a 10 play drive another four minutes and 30 seconds and they get the field goal block incredible 24 plays of eight, eight eaten up nine minutes on the clock have not gotten anything out of it Zoma. he can't go anywhere the options as coming through on the play for georgia southern was big 98 eric handley Boy, he whipped him around like it was a rag doll. Hadley does a super job. Kevius Johnson almost turns around and looks back at his quarterback and asks, why didn't you give me the ball? Watch Kevius Johnson run through untouched, number 20. And he looked back as his quarterback was tackled by Hadley like, why didn't he give me the ball? Because nobody was anywhere around him. Hadley gets in front of you, 6'2", about 260. It's a full eclipse. He probably couldn't see him. <laughs> Here's home on the throw, and it is going to be incomplete the 45 yard line just a little bit shy wow that was intended good, for curtis nash good throw there bob good throw come the comeback route one of the more difficult routes to complete it's a it's a route where his receiver's got to get beyond the line of scrimmage. see him turn it loose before the receiver came out of the route the ball's right there you got to make that play for your quarterback you just got to make that catch zolman two for four for 19 yards jimmy minor is the walford punter and the always dangerous lewis barr Waiting at his own 25. Minor. Bouncing one out of bounds at the 30. Now let's see. They're going to mark it at the 41 yard line. Timeout on Spartanburg 14 7. Georgia Southern on Fox Sports Net. College football on Fox Sports Net. Southern Conference action coming away from Wofford and Gibbs Stadium. Mike Ayers and the Terriers hosting number six, Georgia Southern. And a 14-7 score in favor of Georgia Southern. Bob Rath and Dave Archer with you. We have had no scoring yet in this second half. The Wofford defense has held Georgia Southern in check in this third quarter, but the offense of the Terriers unable to do anything with the football. They've had yardage, but no points. Williams on the pitch. T.J. Anderson met and dropped, and there's that man again, Dave, Timmy Thrift. Guess who? Timmy Thrift has been all over these pitchbacks all night long, and just another super play running down the line of scrimmage. Thrift is following the flow. They're trying to cut him off of the lineman, but he's just too quick, and he gets to Anderson that makes the play. Matt Nelson kind of shoring things up from the safety position. Again, Georgia Southern not getting much on first down. They give to Jermaine Austin. And Jermaine picks up the yardage and gets it out to the 50, just shy of the appears of a first down. Ryan Steele, the strong safety man with the tackle. That was a nice little wrinkle by Georgia Southern we had not seen yet. 
Chaz Williams starts down the line of scrimmage as an option, then reverses back and hands the ball back to Austin, who had a little delayed crease inside. 13 carries, 75 yards for sophomore Jermaine Austin. Straight ahead goes Chaz. First down at the Wofford 48. Well, this Wofford defense should be fairly fresh. They haven't been on the field much over the last, you count the la last of the first half, and in this half, they've only been on the field for a few minutes. Chaz Williams, nine carries, but 16 yards. Austin. And this time, it was Lee Basinger that had him around the ankle. Number 50. Tough play for a nose tackle to make that tackle. He's just trying to eat up the center when you're in a 3-4 or a 50 tight defense. You have five, four linebackers that are usually in charge of coming up and making your hits once your defensive lineman, your three defensive linemen eat up the offensive line. He got played off the center and then made the tackle on Austin. Jermaine dives to the 40. Eating up the yards now. The Eagles on offense. Jim Thurman the tackle. Southern back to what they like to do. Let their big offensive line lean on you and begin to pound on you. The uh, defensive front for uh, Wofford is a little small. 250, 250, and 260 across the front. And that bigger offensive line begin to batter them a little bit and try to lean on them and wear them down. Third down. Austin. First down at the Wofford 30. Another big gain for Jermaine of 10 yards. This young man from Darien, Georgia, and was a tremendous wrestler in high school. He was 25-0 and 0 as a senior, won 161 matches wrestling, and both he and and J.R. McNair, great wrestlers, telling us how important that training was to their football. Yeah, their balance, and you can see it stepping over people, laying on the ground. He just is really hard to knock off his feet. Austin, and again, finding that hole, diving down to the 25-yard line. In the Southern Conference today, Appalachian gets its first win, 24-21 over Moorhead State. Elon with the... Home field win over East Tennessee, 14-0. In Cullowee, Western defeats the Citadel, 28-21. Gardner-Webb in the fourth, leading UTC, 23-13. And just uh, over the uh, hill from here at Furman, 17-10, the Paladins lead Richmond. Austin with another carry to the 23. It's mind-numbing the way they pound you. Well, the Georgia Southern coaches have obviously seen how well we've taught. We've called Timmy Thrift's number several times tonight, making a play on the pitch. So obviously he, they, they see that the linebackers are beginning to overrun the fullback, and now they're calling a few different blocking schemes to get that front three block and let Austin get a crease in there because maybe those linebackers are overrunning the play to stop the pitch. Austin right at 100 yards now. The 10th 100-yard game of his career. Williams with two, one. And they get the handoff, and not much. They'll be fourth and about uh, two, maybe three yards. Obviously some confusion there. Yeah, they had an equipment problem, and uh, just barely got the snap off. Now they're going to try a field goal now. So coming in, Sean Holland will attempt a 40-yard field goal. And this one is good. A 40-yarder for Sean. A penalty flag. Critical here either way. A penalty on Wofford gives a first down. Defensive holding was the initial signal, which would, get, uh, you, which would give Georgia Southern a first down. And I think you immediately put your offense back on the field and try to punch it in.
The explanation from Lewis Foreman. Holding on the defense, 10-yard penalty, first down. It's an unusual call on a field goal to get defense and holding, but what happens in that situation, your special teams probably has a block play on where you're trying to pull one of the blockers out of the way and get one of your other defenders up through the hole to make the block. Well, oftentimes that'll be called as defensive holding for pulling the offensive player out of the way. That's, that evidently is what happened in that sequence. So the points come off the board. It remains 14-7. Jazz Williams and a bad toss. It's a loose football. It's going to be recovered by Walker. Another poor pitch by Chaz Williams, and Thrift was there to break up the play, but they, with the recovery, you take the points off the board. It's the old adage, bad things happen, and it's a turnover for Georgia Southern. 57 seconds left to go in the period. It's Walford football when we come back on Fox Sports Net. Well, Georgia Southern accepted a penalty that took a 40-yard field goal off the board. Very next play, poor pitch. Hit him in the shoulder. You know, and I blame, I would blame the back in that situation, not keeping a good pitch relationship. Looked like he got downhill before Chaz decided to pitch it to him, which would change where the ball would come in on him. He came out on a shoulder pad in the back, and again, our man Timmy Thrift is there to make yeah. another play. But it's interesting. Well, let's see what Walker can do. We'll talk about the Georgia Southern offense here in just a second. As this time, Walford will go to Corey Dunn for a couple of yards. You know, Georgia Southern, Dave, has made their mark with the option. I mean, it has been their bread and butter since they reinstituted the program 20 years ago. But the timing and the sequencing of their offense is totally out of whack. It's a little off, and if it is a little off, it's just like a finely tuned passing game. You're going to be just that far off with a pitch, and the ball's on the ground. And the way they've been turning it over so far this season is cause for concern in the Eagle Nation. Johnson spinning, getting out to the 26. So Wofford unable to get much in these first two plays as we come to the end of the third quarter. They're going to be faced with a third and about five, maybe four yards to go. But it's a good situation. They're in a manageable third down as opposed to third and long, which we saw him in early in the first half. We come to the end of the third quarter here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Number six, Georgia Southern. Number 25, Wofford. No scoring in that third period, but hard hits and some missed opportunities. We go to the fourth quarter. It's Georgia Southern, 14, Wofford, seven. College football Saturday continues on Fox Sports Net, and we have a dandy going in the Southern Conference. Homestanding Wofford looking to shock Georgia Southern for the second consecutive year. Well, they're down seven as we start the fourth quarter. 14-7, Wofford football, and a third down and four as we start the final period. And the Terriers work out of the gun. It is going to be an option toss to the near side, and with it is Gabriel Jackson taken down by John Mooring, and no first down. They'll mark him at the 30-yard line. It's close enough that they're going to go for it, though, I would think. I mean, this, this team likes to go for it in this situation. Big lick on the sideline. Play fake to Johnson, and then the pitch, and Garrett's just going to stretch for the first down, and credit, nice play by Aaron Whitaker out there. Aaron Whitaker was being blocked and makes a super play to get in to make the hit, and it looked like Garrett got hit down around the leg somewhere. I was slowly getting to his feet. Gabriel Jackson. He, he credit Jackson's uh, effort to get to where he got to because he, he was hit a yard short, and now it's just inches from the first down, and that's that's all heart and all effort by Jackson to get as close as he did. Wofford, as they check on Jackson on the bench, is going to be faced with a fourth down and about an inch. They are two for four on fourth down conversions in this game. Zolman has the play, delivers it to his teammates.
Aaron Johnson has come in for Gabriel Jackson. Devious Johnson hit as he gets the handoff. Georgia Southern football. Derek Butler, the middle linebacker. Boy, we have called this guy's name all night, almost the same as uh, amount of times we've called Timmy Thrift's number on the other side for Wofford. Butler, a huge hit, just guessed. He guesses and shoots. Watch him guess right here. Shoot the A-gap. That's the gap between the guard and the center, and he guessed right. He guessed right. The handoff to Kevius Johnson, and he's right in the hole to make the play. Now Georgia Southern has it at the Wofford 30. Can the Terriers hold him out? It's Jermaine Austin to the 27-yard line. A three-yard gain, second and seven. A crucial part of this game for Wofford. Well, I think when Coach Ayers goes for it in those situations, obviously he believes in his offense is going to pick it up, but he also believes in this crew that's on the field now. He believes his defense is going to, they're going to bow their backs and hold a team like Southern out of the end zone. Austin protects the football, takes it to the 25. Stopped by Jim Thurman. A minute into the fourth quarter, 14-7, Georgia Southern. 105 yards for Jermaine. His career high, 160 yards last year against Gardner-Webb. He just, he is like the Energizer Bunny, man. He, I mean, he's well, he coming is. at you really all is. night long. On the toss, T.J. Anderson. Shy. It's going to be fourth and about two. Thrift with another tackle, Bob. A, another play to, to hold him short. And it looks like they're going to go ahead and try a field goal. Sean Holland coming onto the field. As we mentioned earlier, that 40-yarder that he made, which was a career best, taken off the board. Now he's going to try another 40-yarder. Hunter is the holder. Good spot. Kick is up, and this one is way short. I'll tell you what, that's a tremendous defensive stand by the Wofford defense to rise up after the turnover of downs by their offense. A timeout at Spartanburg. It remains the Eagles 14, the Terriers 7. With Dave Archer, Bob Rathman back with you. Southern Conference football on Fox Sports Net. What a game. 14-7. Georgia Southern in front. Reminder, friends, the NFL returns to Fox tomorrow. The Buccaneers visit Atlanta for an NFC South showdown. Giants Redskins as the NFC East rivals get together. Coverage begins tomorrow at noon Eastern. The biggest stories are in the NFC. And the NFC is on Fox. Yeah, in fact, I, in fact, I got to leave out of here and drive home tonight because I'm doing the, the radio pregame show on Z93 in Atlanta. And you'll be on about, what, 6 in the morning with the pregame? <laughs> Seems like it. <laughs> Wofford with the football and some running room for Corey Dunn. Dancing his way to the 29-yard line. James Young and Aaron Whitaker come out of, out of the secondary to make the tackle. But a good game for this sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky. They've mixed that play in several times during the game, and it's come at good times. They pound the run up the middle with, with Kevis Johnson, and then all of a sudden, here comes the misdirection with Dunn around the other way, and they pick up a nice gain there. Now second and about three. Zolman operating out of the eye. Gives inside. Kevis Johnson to the 20... Uh, Check that the 33-yard line. Is it a first down? Yes. But Kevius Johnson, a pressure player, freshman, 5'9", 180, and just carrying the ball in there where you expect the big fellas carrying it. And he, he obviously has a big heart because he's not a big guy. No, they moved him from halfback to fullback and uh, with great success. 14-7, Georgia Southern. Here he comes again. Slashing inside over the 35 to the 37. Seven straight possessions. Wofford has come up empty-handed. 20 to 20. They've been wonderful. Really? But getting points on the board has been a problem. That's exactly right. They've moved the ball extremely well on this Southern defense. 
and uh, just have not been able to punch the football in. In fact, Southern is number one in the Southern Conference in defense, only giving up 264 yards a game. Second and seven. Zolman on the option. Met and dropped. Derek Butler. Well defended by both linebackers out there. Mooring had the pitch to Dunn, and Butler was responsible for the quarterback. Zolman stays down after the Butler hit. Looked like he got rolled up in the ankle. Rides the fullback, and now look at the two linebackers play it. You see Butler's there, and Mooring's outside playing the pitch. Boy, that's the way you draw it up. That, uh, the Southern defensive coordinator has to be extremely, extremely happy with that. Uh, Rusty Russell drawing it up. That's exactly the way he wants them to play it. The Russell name, of course, a magic one at Georgia yeah. Southern is Dad Irk getting the program going again back in the early 80s and what a wonderful winning tradition they've had. So Zolman comes out, and this man, Trey Rogers, who had a wonderful first half, gets another opportunity. Zolman's such a, such a competitor. You hate to see him come out of the game, but when Rogers came in in the first half, he really kick-started this offense. Comes in a big situation here, third and seven. Yeah, oh, by the way, would you mind bailing <laughs> us out here? He'll make a play for us. Sullivan is his fullback. Rogers wants to pass. Now will run. Now throws. And it's complete. Up to the 50. As Wood makes the grab first down. Walford. How about coming off the bench and making a throw, though? Man. Comes off the bench. They go play action, looking to throw the football down the field. Then scrambles and makes a super throw to the sideline. Here he is. The little play action fake. You see him duck his head. Now he gets a little pressure to the outside. I'm going to run it. No, nope. I'm going to pull up and throw this one right on the money uh, for the first down to Wood. And with the ball at the 50, we have an injured uh, Wofford Terrier back at the 27-yard line. Last year, Wofford went into Statesboro with Georgia Southern riding a 29-game home field winning streak. The Eagles always tough to beat in Statesboro. But the Eagles had their turnover problems that day. They fumbled it five times, lost one. This is Jesse McCoy, who took it 30 yards for the touchdown. And Wofford led 7-0. Then Wofford on a great defensive display here. They stopped the option cold. Three different plays, and then we move along to the fourth quarter when Georgia Southern put it in. Dream Walden's two-yard run made it 7-7. Then the Jeff Zolman run of uh, 61 yards to the one-yard line. Jesse McCoy took it in from there, and Walker was able to pull off the stunning upset, 14-7. Zolman, shaken up, has given way to Trey Rogers. It is first down on the fake. Now the pass, and Wood knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Here's a look at Zolman. And that uh, getting the ankle reevaluated, yeah, probably get rolled up on the ankle. And Eric Deutz, the all-Southern Conference offensive guard, was the man down who limped off the field. Looked like he had a, it looked like he was limping. Most offensive linemen do limp, but I think it was a shoulder that was bothering him. Trey Rogers seems to give him, Bob, a little bit more in the game. And, and Zolman, Zolman's such a competitor, but Rogers gives that little extra with being able to throw the football on the move. Marty Bauer has come in to take Deutsch's spot at right guard. Rogers met and driven back. They'll give him his progress to the 43, third and short. Mooring up to make it yet another hit. Well, the linebacker play in this game on both sides of the football has been, has been outstanding. He started picking all Southern Conference linebackers. You could start right here with this game and pick out a, about three or four of them right here. So what does Mr. Rogers and company have up their sleeves with a third and, oh, we'll call it two, with the Wofford team that hasn't scored since their second offensive possession of the game, desperately trying to get even. Again, Wofford's managed the game well. It's a third and three situation. A lot of options here for Rogers. Done. And again... 
coming through was mooring the first hit and it will be fourth down fourth and one mooring with nine tackles his cousin mike played college football at Pitt. now with the oakland raiders so some pretty good bloodlines <laughs> No, for the boring family. Ninth play of the drive. Timeout, Walker. They want to talk it over. Crucial play coming. Just under nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter in Spartanburg. 14-7, Georgia Southern. Today, that's tonight on the SSR. Following the game, hopefully you will join me and Laura Oakman. We'll see you then. Thank you, Bob, and we've got a dandy here. Fourth quarter, 14-7, Georgia Southern. Walker drew first blood way back early in the first quarter. Kevious Johnson took it in from, taking it in from two yards out, 7-0. Georgia Southern tied it. Kevin Davis with a beautiful run of 36 yards to tie the game right at the end of the first quarter at 7-7. Then on Georgia Southern's next drive, T.J. Anderson goes 19 yards. And that put the visiting Eagles in front 14-7. We haven't had any scoring since, but not for lack of effort. A crucial fourth down, and look out. Here goes Rogers getting sacked by Burchett. As Georgia Southern has a big fourth down play, but there is a penalty flag at the 37. I think you're going to get a defensive holding call on Whitaker on the corner against Wood, the wide receiver. And that will give Wofford the first down. And Trey Rogers gets up limping after Zolman went to the bench to get taped up. Rogers came out of this with a little pitch fake and wanted to throw the football to Wood on the sideline. A little change up on fourth and one. And Whitaker. Hmm, boy, the oh, leg got, underneath. Boy, he got folded up. He got up and he walked around, though. Holding on the defense, 10-yard penalty, first down. Whitaker held Wood on the sideline, huge penalty. So Wofford gets a first down by penalty at the Georgia Southern 31. Well, how many times tonight, Dave, have we seen fourth down plays get turned on a penalty? You know, roughing the punter in the first half on a fourth down, and now this one keeps the Walker drive alive. And going to work is Corey Dunn. Dunn to the 10, Dunn to the 5. First and goal, Walker. Dunn straight through the middle on an ISO play, straight up the gut. And this time, the Wofford offensive line get these linebackers blocked. 43 is Butler. Gets pushed aside right there by the All-Southern Conference offensive guard, Eric Deutsch, who came back in after the injury and Dunn's to the five. 26-yard gain. And look at him carry Muhammad five yards. Wofford down seven. Trying to prove to their fans and to themselves that last year wasn't a fluke. Johnson looking for that end zone. He is in for the touchdown. Kevious Johnson makes it 14-13. This after Georgia Southern had a sack on fourth down. Two plays later, thanks to the penalty, they score. Oh, the ebb and flow of college football. How the mistakes will step up and bite you. Here Johnson just gets in between, behind his offensive line. Bentley, Gibbs, Anderson all push that right side left side out of the way and are able to get in behind for the touchdown. Nick Robinson with the PAT. And this game is tied at 14. Kevious Johnson's second touchdown of the night. And Wofford and Georgia Southern are all even in South Carolina. Tonight's game is brought to you by your Carolina Ford dealers driving the Carolinas. By bb and you can tell we want your business. And by Stedman Hawkins, keeping active people active. What a game here in Spartanburg, tied at 14 with 8 minutes and 19 seconds left. Wofford and Georgia Southern 
Georgia Southern has not lost consecutive games since 1997. They lost last week at McNeese. They are now in a tie against Wofford here tonight. Wofford's never lost on Fox television. You know that. They're 3-0 and trying to defend that crown. They've got their own streaks. Wofford's got a few streaks. Rupert Murdoch and David Hill just said congratulations. <laughs> Of course, they've never beaten Georgia Southern here at Gibbs Stadium either, so something's got to give. And the last two times that Georgia Southern has come here, they have shellacked the home team. Not tonight. 14-14, and here we go. Jay Harvey set to kick it off for Wofford, and Lewis Barr, the deep man, a great speed man, is deep. Barr has to go back to his end zone to get it, and runs it out 10, 15, 20, and taken down at the 24-yard line. Nice job downfield for the Terriers as number 43 makes the uh, tackle. That is Timmy Thrift, our inside linebacker from Hilliard, Florida, who has been, or Hoover rather, is making the play. He has been, Steve Hoover is from Austin, Texas. Thrift has been everywhere. And this Georgia Southern offense, Dave, only 44 yards in the second half. Williams gives it to T.J. Anderson. But that time, Wofford had the pitch covered with Matt Nelson, the free safety. Southern's had two three-and-out possessions here in the second half. In the whole season, they've only had three in three tw 27 possessions, only three three-and-outs the season so, so far in the season. So that tells you how well Wofford's playing defensively. And if they can get a three-and-out here, Wofford's going to end up with outstanding field position. Second down, Williams finds that little opening and gets his body positioned over the 30 to the 31. It's going to be third down and about three. Well, this is the point of the game where you expect your stars to step up and make plays, and that's that's Jermaine Austin for Georgia Southern. That's Chaz Williams for Georgia Southern. So you look for those two guys to make a play to try to get them in position to score and maybe eat this one out and win the football game. Of course, on the other side of the field, we just saw Matt Nelson there. He's the star on defense along with Timmy Thrift to try to shut down the Southern deep offense. Jams. Bottled up. Dropped. Shy of the first down. Guess who? Matt Nelson in on all three stops on that series. We got the two stars going head to head. We talked about the look in Matt Nelson's eyes yesterday. We had a chance to interview him. I think he had the look in the eyes right there on that play to stop Chaz Williams short of the first down and force Southern into a punting situation. Twelve tackles for, Je for Matt Nelson. And now Matt is back to receive the punt. Sean Holland is ready to punt it. Nelson is going to go to his knees to make a fair catch. At the 33-yard line, a 37-yard punt. Once again, a three and out for Georgia Southern's defense. Let me give you that stat again. They had 27 series of downs coming into this game and only, had only gone three and out three times. They've done it three times in this half against the Wofford defense. For extended regional highlights and in-depth interviews, catch the Southern Sports Report right after our football game. Pam Oliver brings us up to date on the NFL. We'll also have the latest on the day in the SEC and complete coverage of that Clemson-Georgia Tech game all coming up right after the game. Wofford trying to put something together that uh, would give them the lead here. Kevious Johnson brought down by Butler and Young. Johnson's had a big night tonight. He has scored two touchdowns. Now 64 yards on 16 carries. This is where offensive coordinator Wayne, Wade Lang probably got that offense together and said, listen, if we can put a drive together, you have a chance to win this football game. Here's a chance for us to salt the clock away, get in field position, and win the football game. It's all in the offense's hands right now. Under six minutes to play. Trey Rogers at quarterback for Walker. Gives on the inside handoff to Johnson to the 40-yard line. Burchett with the tackle for the Eagles. Third down and three. Number 20 for the Terriers. Southern's opportunity to make a play now defensively. 
They've seen that Wofford doesn't really like to punt the football. In fact, they haven't punted it all night long. If they force him into a fourth and four or five situation, do you see a punt here? This is the, the situation facing Southern's defense. Third and a long two. We'll call it third and three for Wofford. And out of the gun is Rodgers. Now they call a timeout. And that's the second. Their, their timeout for Wofford. We are tied at 14. 4.55 to play. Back in a moment. Tell them. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by your Carolina Ford dealers. Driving the Carolinas. By BB&T. You can tell we want your business. And by Stedman Hawkins. Keeping active people active. Thanks for joining us on Fox Sports Net tonight. A whale of a game from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Bob Rath and Dave Archer with you. 14-14. Walker trying to turn a third and short. Johnson has it at the 44. About the 10th or 11th play of the game we've seen so far. This has been such a great football game from both teams. Back and forth, penalties, mistakes, but, but making plays by your stars and... Kevious Johnson makes the latest play to extend a drive here for Wofford's offense. From Fitzgerald, Georgia, Kevious Johnson. 18 first downs for the Terriers. Movement. Penalty flags. And this is Dunn breaking a couple of tackles and taking it to the Georgia Southern 41. There was movement that was... Looked like it uh, was going to go against the Eagles, a 15-yard run. But we will let Mr. Lewis Foreman and his crew sort things out. Defense, offsides. That penalty's refused. First down. Well, Dunn has come in the game and become a battering ram. He's running this I formation play just straight ahead. Look at the offensive line clear away. Super block right there by 67 Chad Bentley. And watch him take care of the football at the end of the run. Don't want to turn it over now. Johnson. A good tackle that time by Burchett. He would not let Johnson get away. Got him in the vice grips, and you said that Burchett had had a super day against these guys last year with 17 hits. He's been right on that again today. Just one of those southern linebackers that have been all over the football field. Well, keep an eye on that clock, folks. 3.50 and counting, fourth quarter. Wofford's dream would be to punch it in right as the fourth quarter comes to an end. Johnson. Boy, look at him keep those legs moving. They've got themselves a good-looking young running back here at Wofford to the 34-yard line. Big center Brad Anderson came out there holding the shoulder. Might have had a little stinger there, but these guys just do not want to come out of the game on the offensive side of the ball for Wofford, nor do the Georgia Southern players look as though they're bent over and beat. They're both teams just competing down to the wire. Just to keep your breast, the Wofford timeout a moment ago was their second of the second half, so they have one remaining. Rogers gives to the motion man Dunn. 30, 26, and a first down. This Georgia Southern defense, Bob, has been on the field a lot here in the second half. We don't have the time of possession in the second half. But uh, in front of me right here, but they are really starting to wear down a little bit. It looks as though they're becoming a little tired. The change of direction is beginning to get to them. The little pitch play to the outside. There wasn't the flow from the linebackers that we've seen in the first three quarters of this football game. A fresh set of downs for the Terriers from the 27-yard line. This is done. And Burchett there to stop him after a gain of just a couple of yards, second and seven. Really a good job by Burchett there. He had a he had a blocker in front of him. I believe it was Kevious Johnson. Got a hit on him in the hole. He played off the block and made the tackle for a short gain. Wofford 
nearing the 300 mark on the ground here tonight against the Southern defense that was only allowing 135 on the ground coming into the game. But keep in mind that McNeese last week had 422 against this Eagle D. Rogers looks to throw, but he's got a man open. It is Johnson, five, Johnson, Impressive. Wow. This little guy, 5'9, 180. He looked like Jim Brown oh going into the end zone. Goodness. Nick he, Johnson. He didn't want the end zone, did he? Nick Robinson in to kick the point. And it's going to be a bad snap. They're going to run it. And it's going to be out of bounds. No points. Mooring saved the day on what turned out to be a two-point conversion attempt. Well, I think it was a bad snap, and they tried to kick the football, and the, the holder decided he wasn't going to be able to get the kick, so he tried to run. Super play by Mooring. So that keeps it a six-point game. Let's, well, we... I don't think this late. was by design. I think it was a bad snap, and now he realizes he's got to try to get in. Super hit by Mooring, which he's done all night long. And does that play come back to haunt you with a minute 47 left in the game? And an injured eagle on the field. His number is obscured. We'll figure out the uh, injury in a moment. Another look at this marvelous run by Kevius Johnson. This is what the run game will do for you. A little play fake. Sneak Kevius Johnson out of the weak flat. And then he shows his speed. How much does he want it? He wanted it five yards worth. He mm. ran five yards with a defender on him. He took Deion Stokes and just pushed him into the end zone. Shows his speed here to outrun Butler to the to the five, and then it's all whether I can get in or you can stop me. And that's 5'9", 180, folks, driving the defensive back into the end zone. The injured eagle was Deshaun Jude. Another look at the touchdown. Fabulous run. So, we have a six-point game with a minute 47. Now, the question I think they have to ask here about the Georgia Southern offense is do you have enough time? This is not a passing attack to move it down the field. Well, they're going to have to throw it now. They have not been... Wofford stood up and, and stood the test of time against the run. They've only given up just over 200 yards rushing against this team that averages... 320 on the ground so now Chaz Williams is going to have to try to make a play through the air one thing it does do is it spreads the field a little bit and you may see Chaz Williams being able to make some plays scrambling with the ball out of a pass set we'll see this is the guy that's dangerous right now for Wofford I don't think you can let him touch it but he's going to on the return here comes Lewis Barr from the 3 10 15 20 Barr Runs into a little traffic jam and can only get it out to the 28. You talked about the plays, how Walford's dominated in the second half. Terriers, 42 snaps. Georgia Southern, 23. The penalty flag has been thrown. And it was thrown at the 50. Boy, if Georgia Southern's got to go backwards, that will make their challenge more difficult after the play was over unsportsmanlike on the receiving team it'll be half the distance to the goal for Seth. just can't lose your poise this is a situation where the game is in the balance and you can't afford to hurt your football team with a 15-yard penalty i said it before no player is worth a 15-yard penalty and now southern georgia southern at their 14-yard line 86 yards away We see the end of the run here. Number 13 going after the kicker. Now that Georgia, your penalty. Georgia Southern backed up on their own 14. And Williams looking to pass. In trouble. Throws it. It is complete. Out to the 20-yard line. I really believe Georgia Southern can be dangerous in this situation if they get Chaz Williams in a spread formation where he has ability to use his athleticism to run around and make a play. He did there on the scramble and the throw. 
Anderson made the grab, a minute 16 to play and counting. Here's Williams coming, throwing, and it is complete out to the 28-yard line. Kevin Davis making the catch, but they're not stopping the clock except to, to set the chains. Stopped at 109, but that clock's going to crank as soon as it's set for, mo for play. And this is probably something they don't work a lot on, so Chaz Williams is really going to have to manage the clock. Chaz rolling, throwing to the sideline. And it is going to be intercepted, or is it? No, incomplete pass. Ryan Steele, the strong safety, was right there. Let's take another look. It's going to be second down. Williams is going to try to get the ball to the outside on a little curl route by his outside receiver. Just a tremendous effort. Wow, I don't know. Why is that not an interception? Well, it looks like an interception to me. The ball never, his hands are underneath the ball as he hits the ground. That sure looked like an interception to me. But Chaz Williams has new life, has another opportunity to make a play for Georgia Southern. But a long way to go for the Eagles. Chaz wants to throw and does, and complete to the near side. And making the grab, P.J. Cantrell. Now Georgia Southern takes a timeout. Or are they? Yes, they stop it with 47 seconds. Desperately trying to get that clock stopped. First burned timeout. They have two remaining. The Eagles down six, 47 seconds to go. Boy, if you're going to dance, you know, the waltz all night, then you go to the disco, it's a little hard to change your footwork. <laughs> Well, if you want somebody dancing, Chaz Williams is your guy. I really think that he has a chance to make a play here for Georgia Southern. Now that they've spread the field, they've got three receivers in the game, one running back, and now with just a three-man pass rush or a four-man pass rush, there's going to be some running lanes for number 10 to take off. And with his ability to make plays in the open field, again, all he has to do is move the chains to stop the clock. He has a chance to get him in position to maybe take a shot at this end zone. And what challenges... Dave, does that present to the Walker defense? They've been working on the option all night long. Now they've got to change their thinking, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they really do. They have to cover up the outside receivers. No big plays behind you. Yet i got to make sure that this guy that's the Southern Conference player of the year last year doesn't make a play for running the ball. Chaz running. He's going to throw it back to the near side. It's complete to Teddy Kraft. And Kraft is out of bounds to stop the clock at the 37-yard line. 40 seconds to play. Had a little throwback screen on that time. Teddy Kraft was the guy on the backside. Uh, Albert Turner didn't quite get the corner block. Or, Albert, or uh, Teddy Kraft had room down the sideline to do some damage. Credit the uh, Walford defense for stopping that play. 40 seconds left. First down, Georgia Southern. Williams looking, throwing, and it is going to be complete out to the 50-yard line. Making the grab is Teddy Kraft for Georgia Southern. Clock at 32.9, a 13-yard gain, moves the sticks. This is where he's got to have a play call, so when the referee winds the clock, he can immediately snap it. They don't lose any time. Two wide outs to the left, one to the top of your screen. Austin is the lone setback. Chaz rolling. He's looking. Chaz has to run it and slides to the 44. Will they take a timeout? Yes, at 21.3. Wow, interesting decision by Chaz Williams there to slide when you're an option quarterback and you make so many plays running with the football to slide down short of the first down instead of putting your head down trying to make a play, maybe get a first down. Now one timeout remaining for the Eagles, 21.3. I know our clock, we're you, showing you on our Fox box, the stadium clock, and it looks, perhaps if you just, at first glance, it looks like two minutes and 13 seconds, but it's actually 21.3 remaining. Enough time for at least, I would say at least three players, or three plays, at least three plays here with the time and still have one timeout left to go. Tonight's player of the game, Kavius Johnson. As a presenting sponsor of tonight's telecast, BB&T will donate $500 on behalf of Kevius to the General Scholarship Fund of the Southern Conference. And 
at the end of the year, the fund will be distributed among the members of the SOCON. That's the touchdown to put Wofford ahead. The third touchdown for Johnson tonight. Two rushing touchdowns. And this, a receiving TD. But boy, he looked like the best running back in the league on that play. As he needed to get the six, and he did. Now Chaz looks to throw. He's hit as he throws. And the pass is overthrown down the sideline. Good hit on the backside. The rush, Jimmy Freeland coming around the backside. Freeland comes around and makes a nice hit on Williams just as he releases the football. They've got one, uh, Georgia Sun has one timeout left. Now, my throw is going to be somewhere in that intermediate area. Get me in a position to where I can make a throw to the end zone. Still have time for a couple of plays with a timeout in the pocket. Jazz back to pass. To the sideline. Incomplete. 8.7 seconds left. It will be fourth down and four. Now with 8.7 seconds left, you got to go to a trips package to one side of the field and throw it down the field. Anybody that saw the, the Georgia-Tennessee game earlier today saw that this, this is a play that can happen. Uh, Tennessee got a touchdown right at the end of the half on a Hail Mary throw, and this is the situation Georgia Southern's in right now. Cantrell to the near side. Irby to the far side. In fact, three receivers at the top of your screen. Williams back to pass. Goes for broke to the end zone. It is going to be incomplete with nine-tenths of a second. Walford football and the Terriers are going to do it again. They went to Statesboro and stunned the Eagles last year. And Georgia Southern is going to suffer another defeat at the hands of the Terriers this year in Spartanburg. For the first time since 1997, the man, baby. will the Georgia Southern Eagles lose back-to-back -back games? And the first time since 97 that a Southern Conference team, it was Appalachian in 96 and 97, that's beaten the Eagles in consecutive years. And Georgia Southern will drop to 1-2 and 0-1 and in the league, reminiscent of a year ago. Mike Ayers congratulates the victorious Terriers as they come from behind. Georgia Southern had won 68 straight when leading after three quarters but they could not hold the lead tonight. Our final score from Spartanburg, Wofford 20, Georgia Southern 14. For Dave Archer, this is Bob Rathman. Stay with us, the Southern Sports Report coming up next.